G'day. I thought that seeing it was nearing Christmas, that I'd talk about part of the Christmas story and what we can learn from it. I'd like to talk about the wise men and what we can learn from their journey. Now, the wise men are a part of the Christmas story that we're all familiar with, and you'll find their story in Matthew chapter 2. Now, the wise men mentioned in uh, Matthew 2 are sometimes called magi. Uh, they, they were a priestly cl class of astro astrologers and they were probably from Persia. The Bible is not clear how many wise men there were. It's assumed that there were three of them as they gave Jesus three gifts, gold, frankincense and myrrh. But the Bible doesn't confirm that there were three magi. These guys saw a star in the east and, and the star was telling them that a king, a new king had been born in Judea and they followed that star because they wanted to worship the king. From the time they first saw the star to the time they entered Herod's palace in Jerusalem, may have been as much as two years. We know this because the Bible tells us that Herod called them to a secret meeting to determine the exact time the star appeared. Based on this information, he later ordered that all male children two years old and under were to be killed in Bethlehem and its surrounds. Matthew 2 verse 16 says this, then when Herod saw that he'd been tricked by the Magi, he became very enraged and sent and slew all the male children who were in Bethlehem and its vicinity from two years old and under, according to the time which he had determined from the Magi. So if the star had first appeared on the night that Jesus was born, and that was two years before the Magi arrived in Jerusalem, then Jesus would have been an older child than a newborn baby when the Magi found him. In Matthew 2.11, we read, After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they fell on the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. The Bible says, that the Magi saw Jesus in a house. There's no mention of a baby in a manger. So we can safely assume that the Magi didn't see Christ on the night of his birth. So here we have the Magi setting out on a long journey to see Jesus, a journey that may have taken them two years. This journey was long, it was difficult and full of sleepless nights. So here are three things that we can learn from the Magi's journey. Number one, the Magi had to be flexible. This journey would have been difficult. If you're following a star, you can only travel at night. This means that the wise travelers would only travel at night and they would sleep during the day. They had to be flexible and change the way they were used to living in order to follow God's direction. Sometimes when God calls you to do something, you have to be flexible and change your habits or preferences in order to get the job done. God is not going to change his plan and the way that he does things just to make things easier for you. You have to learn to be flexible. The second thing we can learn from the Magi is this. They needed to be patient. The Magi had to wait two years before they saw Jesus face to face. They may have wanted to see him sooner, 
but there were many miles and many sleepless nights between seeing the star and seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. They had to wait for God's timing. No matter how soon we would like to the things to happen that God has promised us, we need to have God's timing. And that means we need to be patient. Sometimes the journey and what happens in the journey are as important as the destination. The third thing we can learn from the Magi is this. They had to listen to God because their plans had to change. Up until the time that God spoke to them in a dream, the Magi probably imagined that they would return to Jerusalem and tell Herod that they had heard they had found the newborn king of the Jews and where he was located. After all, Herod had given them the, this commission to search for the child and report back to him so he could go and worship him. But in Matthew 2 verse 8, we read, And he sent them to, that is Herod, sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child, and when you've found him, report to me so that I too can come and worship him. These guys thought that Herod was a true worshipper, but God knew Herod's wicked heart and the plans he had to kill Jesus. So God spoke to the Magi in a dream and told them to return home another way. The Magi may have thought that uh, having seen Jesus, worshipped him and given him presents that their job was over. But God had other plans. He also wanted them to protect Jesus by not going back to Herod. Matthew 2 verse 12 says, And having been warned by God in a dream not to return to Herod, the Magi left for their country by another way. Perhaps by going the other way, the journey was now going to be longer. Perhaps by going another way, it was going to be harder. Perhaps by bypassing Jerusalem, they wouldn't have opportunity to buy supplies for their journey. Who knows? This could have been terribly inconvenient for them. But you know what? God didn't want them to return to Herod. Their job wasn't finished. We need to be listening to God for the whole time of our journey. We do not want the change we didn't do not know what changes he's going to make to the plans until those changes are necessary. We have to listen, be flexible, and even if the changes are inconvenient, God's will is more important than our convenience or timetable. And remember, the job is not done until God says it's finished. So there you have it. Three things that we can learn from the wise men who travelled to see Jesus. Be flexible, be patient, and listen to God and don't assume that the task is over until God says it is. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for the story of the wise men. And we thank you, Lord, that it teaches us that we need to be flexible, patient, and to listen to you and not presume that the task is over. Help us, Lord, to learn these things and to walk with you closer each day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.